Hello, welcome to the ESP admin uh, webinar. My name is Jacob and I'm going to be the facilitator today. So uh, today uh, we're going to be reviewing the options available for administrators within ESP. Um, if you're unsure of how to log into ESP, you can go to uh, searchesp.com and then go to the uh, login page. So to get to the area we're going to be taking a look at, we'll go to the user icon or avatar there and then click on the settings option. And the admin area enables us to create defaults for our ESP applications as well as manage our company's user accounts. So any basic users that have uh, ESP will have only three of the fields here. So they'll have the import field, notifications, and the uh, emails option here. For any administrators, um, you know, we'll have all of the options that are here and you know, can make changes to them for the company as a whole. The basic users are missing most of these options because a lot of them relate to uh, the company settings. So, you know, in most cases, a basic user, you know, we don't want them to be adjusting those types of things. So the first type of admin control is for our company's users and their default settings. So if we go to uh, users here, you know, we have um, a list of users. We also have, you know, a notifications area here where we can control the um, notifications for the company as well as um, you know any let's say we wanted to create a group of teams we could do that as well so if we look here uh, we have the notification section and this allows admins to set how users are notified when events happen in ESP so there's two types of notifications there's email notifications which are sent to the email address within the users ESP account and then there's in-app notifications which will appear via the bell icon this is the bell here, and you can see I have some notifications there. Some sections have um, sub options, you know, so if we click details here, like let's say we wanted to turn off notifications when something is shared with me. I could hit off there for the email notification and off for the in-app notification. Now let's say there were certain types of these that I still wanted to receive, like if a sales order is shared with me, you know, I could turn on just this option as well. Um, and then if we want to turn them all back on, we'll click like that. Or we can, you know, let's say we don't want notifications by email if someone takes an action on a presentation, you know, we could set it up like that. So if we take a look here next, we'll go to Teams. So this is the next user control section. Um, the team section allows ad admins to create group, you know, sales representatives within the company. And so by creating, you know, teams, we can assign multiple users within the company to, you know, access various areas. So like, let's say we want, um, you know, a certain team to be able to see certain things like presentations or something, you know, we could group them together. We can add new members by selecting them from the list or we can remove members from our existing teams and save. And make a change there. And then also we have, um, you know, we can add a team. So let's say I wanted to add my own team. We could create a team called Jake's team and I could add a few people to it and go ahead and save. If we needed to delete a team or edit an existing one, we have those options right here. Additionally, uh, you know, if we had like a, a larger list of users here, we could also type into this box to, you know, find any that, um, are in our list there. See, so we can find Amber there. So next we'll take a look. Uh, so this kind of covers, you know, how we would group together different users. If we wanted to see the users themselves though, we could choose the users option here. And any available users that are active within our company will be listed here. We can locate users by entering their first name here. Or actually in this box here, the search existing user box. Sorry about that. So if we type in Amber there, we'll see her pull up. If we type in my own name, you know, we'll find myself there. So for each user here, um, you know, we have check boxes and a remove button. Uh, the remove button typically isn't used because it's going to basically remove the um, orders area and stuff like that from the user that you remove it from. Um, the main checkboxes here that you know are typically used are going to be the administrator box. So this provides administrative control of ESP orders in the CRM to you know any of the users. So let's say you're the manager of a company and you have you know a user that's set up as a basic user, you could add administrator rights to their account by clicking this box. 
create invoice so now allows the user to you know essentially do what that says it allows people to um you know create invoices from their user account in esp same with uh, the create po button that allows the users to create purchase orders the data exporter option this gives the user the option to uh, export data from esp orders and crm so if that's unchecked they won't have the ability to like export crm records or uh, order data that um, you know that'll be restricted the email marketing checkbox is there that provides the user access to our email marketing application to send campaigns out. And the orders checkbox will enable the user to send orders documentation. And uh, please keep in mind, once the user has been marked as an admin, they're automatically going to be, you know, designated as uh, getting, you know, all the other permissions there since they're, you know, an administrator. We have company profile next. This is where administrators can use the uh, company profile section to update the company uh, information. So if we needed to change the company name, email, phone, these three fields are required. Um, let's say we didn't have a website, you know, we could opt to not list on there. And then, you know, if our company is using like a third party order system, perhaps we can enter the name of it in the third party system name field. But this typically, you know, isn't used too much unless you already have, you know, some sort of existing system that you would need to be you know, using there. Um, there's also the option here to enter an address. And as you type into this, it'll give you, um, you know, predictive addresses from Google. And then we'll kind of fill in, you know, the city, state, postal code for you. Um, or you can manually type that in, obviously. Uh, same thing with some of the options down here. So we have a few different, um, you know, settings on this screen for the company profile. So we have the default salesperson. This controls, you know, who's set as the salesperson for an order, whether it's the uh, user set as the customer record owner or the order creator. So obviously, you know, the order creator is the user who creates the order for any customer. And then, you know, this option here would make it so that, you know, whoever owns the customer account in the CRM would be set as the order contact. You can also set defaults for order payments, whether or not they're allowed to be uh, placed on the orders themselves. Order tracking, this will allow you know users to track their orders or you know set a contact for questions about an order. We can also change you know who that default contact is here, whether it's the customer record owner, order creator, or someone else. You can set it to the order creator and save. So next we have. Um, Two more sections for user controls here in particular. There's the default item visibility here and default tasks. So default item visibility that we're taking a look at first. Uh, so for each level, administrators can set the uh, visibility for um, you know any of the options here. So what does the visibility do? So um, the visibility essentially controls you know who's able to see and access things. Um, if you have more than one user and, you know, there's multiple administrator users, they're going to kind of ignore these settings because they're a manager, but these will apply to, you know, the basic users for sure. Um, you know, that's kind of who it's mainly geared towards, you know, since the ma managers will be able to see um, their, their visibility is pretty much set to everyone always since they're a manager. And so we can see here we have the visibility level for a variety of things. We have company, contact, tasks. So for all of these things, we can choose whether or not we want to have for basic users, you know, these things visible. So let's say we had a large company where we have a few different sales teams and we don't want, you know, each sales team to be able to see the other's uh, contacts or companies in the CRM. We could restrict those to owner only to make them more private. Uh, same thing with the rest of these. So, you know, if we, you know, wanted the basic users to be unable to see their coworkers' orders, we would set that to creator only. So usually, you know, essentially most of these really kind of depend on how locked down everything needs to be. Like if people aren't supposed to be seeing each other's presentations, you could set that to creator only, things like that. Also can edit. We could set this to read only or read and edit. So what this means is let's say we had everything set to everyone, but set to, you know, read only. That means the other users, they might be able to see records that they haven't created for basic users, but they won't be able to, you know, overwrite those. So we're going to go to the default tasks area here. And this area contains uh, two types of tasks. We have automatic tasks as well as common tasks. 
So automatic tasks are those created by the uh, individual company admin. And, you know, we have um, the ability to add these types of tasks right here. There's a number of different options here. We can, you know, we'll be required to put in a name. Um, we can change who it's, you know, assigned to, what type of category the task is, whether or not it's public or private. This will designate whether or not, you know, other users are able to see the task or not. And we can set a priority as well. We can also set up a due date for our tasks, um, you know, as well as an effective date for when they start. And then we have some options down here to select the type of document that they should apply to. We can, you know, choose multiple or a single one. And then we can choose, you know, where we want this task to run and whether or not it should be linked to, you know, our customer, decorator, or supplier. And we also have, um, you know, common tasks here. These are tasks that are pre-configured by ASI um, based on usage data and research. And these can be, you know, removed or modified at any time, just like the automatic tasks can up here. You know, we have the pencil icon to edit them as well as the trash icon to get rid of them. Um, you can see here I created a common task previously for the webinar. Um, you know, we can see that I have it set to send reminders. What this will do is basically send us a notification once it gets close. Um, you know, to the time that the task is due. If I wanted to, you know, delete that common task I created, I'll just hit the trash can icon and accept. And then we also have the, uh, you know, order capability options. So each of these options that we just looked at, they kind of control the admin's rights to, you know, manage the defaults and capabilities for users. Um, we also, though, as an admin, have the ability to control the order management options with the ASP, within ASP. So the order capabilities include the integrations, emails, document design, numbers, and uh, sales tax and orders status section. So for the integrations option, which we'll start with, um, we're able to connect ESP to uh, three different programs, or actually four. Uh, there's QuickBooks Online and Desktop, which are two of them, but they're both QuickBooks. And then we have um, SmartBooks is another application as well as uh, ProfitMaker. So in order to use the integration, um, you know, our company obviously has to have an account with the service we'd like to integrate with and each has its own integration process. Um, you know, if you need more information on integration, you can reach out to support or if you click on the, um, you know, help and support center here, you can search for integrations and it'll suggest articles, you know, based on the area you're in here. Um, we also have the email settings next. So if we go to here, admins can customize the standard email subject line um, and text for all sales document types. So we have a drop down here where we can, you know, select between different types of documents that we want to customize. Um, you know, and we can enter information into all of these sections um, as well as use the add fields option. You know, if we need to input specific information that's going to be like automatic on the order, like the order number here, like this. Thing in brackets here it's essentially a code that you could add by clicking add field so that it knows you know any time that you're sending an order for the subject line it's going to replace this with the order number same thing with this thing here this is going to replace you know this kind of string here with the uh, company name from the based on what we have set in company profile here so um, you know we can also adjust the signature for the company and we can use this option to make it so that our users either can or cannot uh, edit the signature. So if we have it set this way, whatever I set as the email signature, that's you know set in stone. Um, but if we want to make it editable, we can just click to save there, and then our users will also be able to edit the email signature. And then these here, these are going to be the default message and subject line for each of these types of documents. We can also choose, you know, where the replies are sent to, whether it's sent to kind of the company email address or the individual sender's addresses, or if we had, you know, a certain address that we wanted to send those to. Other than those, we could as well. Next, we'll take a look at the document design area. So in addition to customizing the, you know, email options there, we can also customize our uh, sales documentation. Like if we had a company logo we wanted to use, we could click upload there. You know, here's a logo I created, um, you know, just kind of using some clip art and lettering. And we can see, you know, now this will be basically put onto all of our order documentation that we would be sending from ESP. And we also have the option here, we can choose, you know, different document types. So like, let's say we wanted to 
change what shows on the header of our purchase orders or we needed to add something into the footer on a purchase order, we would select that from the list here and then you know make our edits and save. We also have the option, you know, let's say we want to show different things. So if we need to show the shipping contact email address and phone number, you know, in addition to um, the other information that's already displayed on the PO by default, we could choose to enable these options here and then save. So next we'll take a look, um, you know, one thing to remember here, just as uh, an aside, you want to make sure that you're, you know, selected on the right document. Um, sometimes, you know, people have trouble because they edit one, but forget that, you know, there's other selections here. It lets you, you know, customize each order document separately. We have the sales tax area here. This is where we can add a, um, you know, physical location for our company as well as, you know, there's a checkbox here where we can automatically calculate taxes, um, you know, based on the orders where we do business. We can also uncheck this, so we can manually set a rate for any state that we pay sales tax in here. We'll set that back to the automatic tax calculation using uh, the tax drawer service. And the last order control option for admins is gonna be the order status area here. Um, so in order status, we have the option we can, you know, change the existing statuses as well as add, you know, new statuses. So let's say we wanted to add like a, um, you know, order pending status. We could do this and we could say, you know, we don't want these orders locked. Basically what locking means is whether or not like another person could come in and change the order when it's in this state. And we can set that, you know, we can either set it to not lock, we can set it to be locked in a way where any user could change it, or we could set it to, you know, be locked, but allow admins to, you know, change the status of them. If we needed to remove a custom status that we've built, we could do that here. And then these will be available for, you know, any of the users at our company. They can go ahead and, you know, basically like apply these different order statuses as a selection for, you know, various orders that they have. Um, the order, you know, the two order statuses that are there by default, open and closed, these can be edited, but they cannot be deleted um, just because they're the two, you know, basic default statuses they need to stay there. The one other thing that we'll take a look at here for the document numbers is where we can set up, you know, what um, the starting number is for our order documents, as well as add a prefix. You know, let's say we had like an acronym for our company such as ASI, you know, we could put that there. Um, or if we wanted something to, you know, appear after the document number, um, you know, like let's say we put PO after every document, we could do that. And then we can also click this option on if we want to make it so that our users at the company will also be able to edit the document numbers too. We also have the CRM import option here. If you go to the import button here, this will be available to um, all users as well. Um, and they can, you know, upload files containing company and contact information. There's a few different formats they can have that data in, um, such as a CSV, Outlook file, Google IIF, which is a QuickBooks file, or a vCard format. By and large, the one that we see the most and that is the most common, you know, for people to use is going to be the CSV file. Um, it's essentially like a basic spreadsheet. It looks a lot like, like you could open it in Microsoft Excel. Um, but it's not necessarily like in the Excel proprietary format. It's its own kind of um, file type. Lastly, we have relationships here. So this is a CRM setting that can be created by administrators only. Relationships are going to be connections from one company or contact to another. And so it's important to keep in mind that relationships can only be established between, you know, two companies or two contacts, but not between like a company and a contact. Um, the companies and the contacts, they can be linked together in the CRM. Um, however, you know, the relationships area here is essentially like, let's say we had, you know, a company that is, um, you know, like a parent company or affiliated with another company. You know, we can use these like different relationships to essentially like mark that. Like, let's say we had, you know, a business where it's a family business. Like we could mark, let's say we had like a Mark Sullivan and a Peter Sullivan. We could, you know, mark Mark Sullivan as like the, you know, the parent of, and then, you know, Peter as the child of. And so it would basically tell us like when we go into the record for them, you know, it'd say, you know, Peter Sullivan's name. And then it'd say, you know, for when we look at like the linked contacts, we'd be able to see his dad there. And it would say, you know, that P 
Peter's the child of him. Um, if we needed to like add more of these, like let's say we had you know some specific type of title um, at a certain company that we wanted to add this for, you know we could do that as well. Um, typically, I would say you know most people are, will use the the defaults here, but you know if there's specific ones that you need to add, you could definitely um, you know do that as well or edit them using the pencil and uh, trash can icons there to get rid of them. Um, so this does conclude the ESP admin training session here. Um, um, if you do need any more information on the training classes, if you go to kb.asicentral.com, you can find you know articles and information on um, ESP as well as you know the trainings. So if you go to this website and you can you know either sign up for more live trainings, we have FAQs and articles on the applications and the recorded webinars and videos here as well. And so, you know, from this page, we have a large number of, you know, different, um, you know, areas here. Um, if you needed to see today's presentation again, there's like information on that here. Um, if you click the ESP admin, that'll bring you to, you know, our, all of the different articles on, um, you know, each kind of area of the admin that we just took a look at. Um, and again, you know, if you do need, um, you know, assistance over the phone or have any issues that, you know, require troubleshooting, you can always give our support team a call. Um, we're available here uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And you can reach us by calling 1-800-546-1350 or by emailing us at support at asicentral.com. Um, and again, um, I'd just like to thank everyone today for attending. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and have a, have a great weekend.